The soteriology of some who hold to fulfilled prophecy is alarming and questionable. Soteriology being a fancy word for the doctrine of salvation. There are some who call themselves corporate body view CBV pretress who deny original sin, predestination, election, particular redemption and the resurrection of the dead ones from out of Hades that took place at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They also denied that the death of Christ was to redeem believers' bodies. It would seem also. They deny that at the general resurrection, which took place at the end of the age, that the saints were given their glorified individual bodies, and those believers who were alive at his coming were changed and given their individual glorified bodies, just like believers today will be given when they die and their carnal bodies put off. The doctrine of salvation is of the whole man. It is the redemption of his body and soul. The final state of the redeemed is that their personal soul and glorified body will be one, just like the Lord Jesus Christ has today, who has an immortal, glorified, incorruptible, glorified body in heaven. The corporate body view preachers deny this. Reformed teaching of salvation is that God, before the world was, determined to save from Adam's fallen race a body of people styled the elect. These were individuals who had been in the mind of God and were chosen by God the Father to be in Christ. These are individuals from every kindred, tongue and nation. These were chosen in Christ to experience the redemption and the salvation which the scripture speaks of. These are called the people of God, the Israel of God, or Church of God. The redemption involves spiritual adoption into the family of God, justification, forgiveness of sins, regeneration, the gift of faith, and the work of grace in the soul and life of each one of those called to this great salvation. This redemption is of the whole man, both body and soul. The bodily redemption being that of a new, personal, glorified, spiritual, immortal body, free from corruption and impeccable, in which the whole man praises God for the good work, in other words, the glory of his grace. This was the design of God from the beginning. The creation of man in the image of God, both male and female, was designed by God with a purpose in view. The creation of angels was for the same purpose. Angels are spiritual beings, and unlike men who are embodied spirits. Angels who have no bodies, yet they glorify God. The elect angels, being preserved in Christ, never fell into sin and are not in need of salvation. There is no salvation for fallen angels. The redemption of man, through the redemption that is in Christ, is to elevate man to the highest position higher than that what he was in his original state at creation. Man was originally created, that is both Adam and Eve, with immortal souls and bodies, bodily immortality being preserved by God, whilst in innocence only God has immortality. Both Adam and Eve and all their descendants became mortal due to their sin. Though Satan sought to prevent man from fulfilling his creative purpose, by devising man's fall into sin, his purpose was frustrated. He sought to bring about man's destruction by craft, causing man to fall into sin and to come under the death sentence worn by God. Adam and Eve would not only die a spiritual death, but have died a corporal death, death of the body, and also a second death, that was their immortal soul would experience the awful state and condition of the lost. Satan meant it for evil, but God meant it for good to bring about the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God stepped in and announced the coming salvation by the seed of the woman. That is, man, through experience in salvation, could now rejoice in the glory of God's free grace and come to know the goodness and mercy of God. But for the fall that Satan connived to bring about, we would not experience or be able to experience redemption for redemption is from out of the fall, out of the fallen state that man has fallen into.
It is the redemption of the body, soul and spirit. Each one of the elect children are given new, immortal, incorruptible, personal glorified bodies after the fashion and likeness of the risen Lord Jesus. Elect angels glorify God through their doing the will of God and through their observation and praise of the works and judgments of God and for their preservation from the fall. They were being chosen in Christ, their head, and so preserved from the fall. They cannot experience what redeemed man does or glorify God for their salvation as they never sinned. They are not in need of salvation. Redeemed man, that is, those who have experienced the salvation that is in Jesus Christ and are destined to die a corporal death, that's physical death, due to their death in Adam and the death sentence passed upon Adam in the Garden of Eden, are predestined to life, eternal life, and to put on an individual, glorified, impeccable, immortal, spiritual, glorified body, like unto the glorified body of Jesus Christ, and so fulfil their created purpose. Man was made to glorify God in every way possible, in his body, soul and spirit. We sing of the glory of God's grace through our subjective and real experience of redemption, whilst angels are spectators. The redemption spoken of in the scripture is of the whole man, body, soul and spirit. Each redeemed person do glorify God in a way that angels cannot due to them being men and in possession of a glorified body. And as Jesus said in Matthew 8, 11, they be among the many who would come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, feasting and sharing and celebrating in praise of the perfections of the three persons in God for all their wise good acts and works of God in their grace and love toward them and so the fulfilment of Isaiah's prophecy. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come and worship before me, saith the Lord. For further studies on this subject, I have enclosed the URL link to John Gill's body of doctrinal divinity, book two of the Acts of God, and also a podcast on the same subject, a body of doctrinal divinity, book two, of the Acts of God, chapter 1, 2 and 3, accessed at the link provided. You can email for the PDF copy. I stand to be corrected in what I've written and said and would value feedback.